Welcome back to another episode of Car Man Conversations, and we're deep in the used car centre conversations at the moment, and I'm loving every bit of it. There is so much to talk about in the used cars, and again, I'm joined by Lauren for some more bangers. Hit me, Lauren. <laughs> I'm really excited about this episode because we went out and did a little bit of market research and have asked a group of people everything about the used car centre. I center. can't wait for this. Yeah, we've I got a couple wait. of bangers. First one. If I'm going to buy a used car, what are some things that I should look out for in terms of like checking the health of the car? Uh, a good one um, and, and standard. Um, what do I look for um, straight away? Uh, the quality of the car, service history, service books, um, damage. Um, has, it, has it been, um, had it damaged before, panel damage, hail damage? Mechanically, is it good? Uh, and a lot of this information you're going to be um, able to find straight away by the look of the car. Oh, so it's transparent information. Very it's... transparent information, yeah. but you'll be able to tell from the look of the car also. You know what I mean? You can tell a good car from a bad car or a car that's been polished on the outside but pretty ordinary on the middle, you know? <laughs> so, um, and and a lot of people do get caught by buying cars that may look good or they might see something online, but it's probably not the real deal. Um, we're, we're a little bit different here. The only cars that we'll keep in a yard are very, very good quality, high standard cars. Um, and when I say high standard, that can be a car that could be a four or five thousand dollar car is extremely high standard and it good mechanical history, um, great service history, uh, and, and and great condition structurally. You know, tyres are good, wheel arm is done, everything's right on the car. So, uh, the things to look for straight away would be the overall general condition of the car. Um, but you're going to get a lot of this information back from transparency from the salesperson you're dealing with. If you're looking online, hard to tell. Mm. Like so you can, you, yeah, you can make something look really, really good, but um, when you actually get to see it. You're going to be a little bit disappointed, somewhat disappointed, you know. So, so what are those red flags then? Um, the, in terms uh, of the, the vehicle, I guess uh, no service history. Uh, a lot of people will buy a car and just refuse to service them. You know, they think that they don't need servicing. Uh, that can be a common one, and and that you, you really see that uh, down the track. Uh, general wear and tear of the car, um, how well it's looked after. You know, some people take a lot of pride and joy in their car, and other people just use it as as transport. Yeah, uh, and that'll show. That'll show on tyre wear. Uh, that'll show on general condition around the car. Um, and you think if that general condition looks like that on the outside, what's it look on like in the inside that you can't see? Um, and then just general cleanliness of the car too. You know, um, you, you can detail a car, but sometimes you can't hide real poor wear and tear. Yeah. Um, and you can see that. You can see from general damage inside the car how well the car's been looked after, you know. So, um, and again, I guess that comes back to where you're looking at the car, what platform you found the car, um, and in what sort of yard you're looking, you know. Um, and some people will just keep cheap cars and, and not do much to, to them and make them look shiny on the outside. Um, and a lot of people get caught, you know. So, yeah. again, it comes back, and I've said this in, in a lot of my episodes, it really comes down to reputation and dealing with the right people reputable dealer um, and someone that you know is very passionate about their cars and has a really good reputation because they want you to come back. I think then it leads really well into another question that we've received about buying from different platforms. Yep. And there are so many ways you can buy something secondhand yep. now. And I mean, places like Facebook Marketplace, yep. car sales, I guess is different, but Gumtree, yep. if people go out to look in, independently to yep. buy a used car, they can come quite unstuck because they don't have that expert guidance Correct. that Correct. they would receive coming through a dealership. Yeah, there's some things you don't buy online. Um, <laughs> and, you know, there's uh, it's it's not like you go and find a pair of shoes online and it's great. You know, you'll order them, you get them, and they're the wrong size. Yeah. It's not dissimilar with a car because what you're seeing there and you've seen others like it and you think this one's going to be just as good until you've actually seen the car, driven the car, got the feel for the car. Um, it, 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 it might be an indication to go and look at it, but I wouldn't be going any further than that, you know, because there's a lot of things you can get covered up in a car. Yeah. You know, and you don't know the history from, from looking at that car online, you know. You don't know what it drives like, you know. There's certain noises in the car. It may not be the right car at the same time, you know. In your head, you might think it's the right one. But until you actually get in it and it feels right, drives right, sounds good, looks good, uh, and you'll know yourself, you know, mm. um, before making a purchase. And you wouldn't want to go wrong by spending a big amount of money and not being the right car. So, yeah, the platforms, uh, there are so many to go and find a car now, you know, uh, and there's reasons why those cars, and I touched on an episode earlier around that people think, okay, they might have been offered 15 grand from a dealership, but they, in their mind, might think it's worth 20 grand. So they're going to put on Gumtree or on Facebook and put it advertised for 20 grand. Has the car been roadworthy? You know, has there been all the recalls done on the car? There's a big, big thing now with, with recalls, and there's yeah, so many recalls on the car. Have they been done? You know, because that car without a recall is unroadworthy. 
Um, you know, um, so these are the things to be checking for. Is there finance owing on the car? Has the car been paid out? Are the encumbrances been paid out? Have we done PPSR checks to check if it's been water damaged, stolen, a written off register, any of these things? You know, there's so many contributing factors that you don't know. Um, and unfortunately, uh, we're in a world where people will try and sell these things. Um, and again, uh, I wouldn't be buying anything from anyone unless I, uh, they had a really good reputation and you know the people and, and dealing with reputable dealers, you know? So what are some telltale signs? Because this is another question that we've had come through that um, we've spoken about red flags in cars, but what about some red flags in people that you're buying from as well? Yeah. Um, like what are, what are the cheesy giveaways that they are with the wrong intention? <laughs> Probably the lack of transparency, uh, not yep. being upfront, not showing people logbooks, not giving the service history, not letting them test drive the car. Um, you know, when asking about questions of the car, is this paid out or is there money, money owing, has a PPR set, PPSR check been done and not getting that info? They're telltale signs. What is it? What is it PPSR? PPSR check. What's so that? it's your check online to make sure that there's no encumbrance on the car, but it'll also check for okay. any history as in has the car been on the written off register, which might have been from, from water damage, flood damage, hail damage, right? anything else. Um, big, big collision, um, which is all what we find as dealers through our PPSR check. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, how much rego is left on the car, a lot of that stuff won't be advertised. Um, so there's certain things what to look for and, and you'll, 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 you'll certainly know straight away. Trust um, and transparency. But yeah, I, I got a call and I encourage people and, and I'm happy to give advice to people if they've found a car online that might look like the right one. Um, reach out to me, you know, I'm happy to give um, uh, my, my thoughts and let them know, you know, that, that uh, no, you're going about the process a little bit wrong. You need to check for this, 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 this. And I, I got a call from a customer the other day saying, look, um, I'm looking to buy this privately. Um, this is the areas I'm at. And I just went through about some of the process to follow, which is, you know, um, making sure that a PPSR check's done. Is there any finance going on the car? And it didn't take long. We are a couple of minutes in the conversation where we realised, you know, well, none of that's been checked. Yeah, okay. Um, so all of a sudden you're, you're at risk, you know, um, and there's a lot of things when it comes to ownership and transfer of ownership and, and roadworthy uh, that need to be done properly, you know, um, and you see that, you see it a lot. So there, there are a few things, but again, um, research is there to be done. You might find some cheap cars and, and I also get calls a lot of the time from people saying, I'm looking for this car and they all seem to be at 40 grand online, but I found this one for $31,000. Why is it so much cheaper? generally reason for it there's big generally red flag there. so uh that's probably something why there's a nine grand discre discrepancy on that car so yeah okay. but again um i'm all about transparency and you know i'm the car man for a reason i want to help people out so if you've found that car and um you think it's the right one but don't really know the process reach out and i'll help you through it okay i think you touched on it just a little bit um briefly before and it was actually a question that came through about understanding i mean i'll take a step back when we talk about new car process and the stuff that you have within your, the dealership, it's really important the journey that you take them on to figure out if what car is right for the yep. customer and it, it really comes down to their lifestyle, what they need it for, longevity and, yep. and all of that. But you've also got that, I guess that's what you miss out on if you go through different platforms like Facebook, Marketplace yes. You're and, losing all and that, Gumtree. All that interaction, um, it's a lot of risk. Um, you're relying on what the description says. Hmm. Um, you know, you're relying on that the... the what is put in that description is accurate, you know, and you're hoping that when you do get to that car that it's gonna look good, you know, you walk around that car, you're checking for marks, you, but you can't see everything, Yeah. you know? It's not as if you can go and do a 120 point inspection on that car when you've gone to pick it up, is it? You no. Know? So, it's um, like a game of smoke and mirrors. You it is. You don't get that it when is. you're down. It's, it's, it's a big it's risk and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to risk a few little things, but I'm not risking a 20 or a 30 grand transaction, that's for sure. No. Okay, my next question is, we obviously encourage, and it's common to hear going for a test drive, it's stock standard, and you yep. go buy a new car or look at new cars, you take them for a test drive. Yep. The question is, should you try before you buy with a used car? And it's probably more important. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So I couldn't agree more. And this is the thing, again, we go back to what we were speaking about earlier about the platforms to buy from. You can't test drive that car. And every car drives different, you know? Um, it doesn't matter how many masses I've driven, they all drive different. And they've all got a different feel. Um, they all got a different feel. And you don't know, you might look at this car that might have done 20,000 or 30,000 Ks, it might be a couple of years old. Um, it should drive like a new car and it will drive like a new car. But if you haven't owned that model, you've never owned that that Mazda, how do you know what that car's meant to feel like and what to drive like? Hmm. You know. So I think that's why it's very, very important that um, 
and this is why we suggest it so much with new cars, drive it, you know, that it doesn't matter whether it's Mazda or Kia or Nissan, whatever it might be, they're all gonna drive nice, but they all feel different, Yeah. you know? Um, if you're looking at that car and you found the perfect car online, it's $31,000, know, that's it, it's the right color, it's everything I want. I still encourage you to spot, before we get any further into it around the quality of the car, is it the right car for you? You know, drive that car, Has you know, have you checked your blind spots? Does it feel right on the road? Um, is it is it your car? You know, yeah. is it the right car for you? And generally, you know, and it's generally with anything in life, when you get in something, you go, this, this feels right. Yeah. This feels right. So that's something you can't do when you're online, and it's so important to drive that car. Secondly to that is... You drive that car, and in your expectation in your mind, it should drive like a new car. There might be a certain noise. There might be a bit of road noise. There might be a little clunk in the car. There might be a bit of a rattle here and there. Um, and these are all things that, that might be minor or these little things that may be fixed, but you need to be driving this car to make sure first. You know, So I think it's very important in a used car. In your mind, you might have been set set in stone. No, I want to buy a small SUV. And you come in there and you're like, oh, well, you know, it didn't feel right. But that's where, you know, hang on, well, why don't we drive this one and make comparisons? Yeah. You know, and you'll find that right car to suit. So and I guess with really the important. used car and you've got the variety there to you got choose the variety. from as well. So. Uh, you've got the expertise. You can talk to people about it um, and get the right ideas, you know. So, um, it, it, yeah, it, it, I guess... I guess so. Again, we talked about it before. Used cars has this stigma that it's in, like another planet to new cars, but you know they're next door to each other. They're the same. Yeah. You start as a new tar- car to a used car. It deserves the same amount of respect, the time put into a used car as what you would a new car purchase. And that even extends to servicing as yep. well. And that the question we have is that around warranty, and I think it's yep. the the amount of warranties is, is flashed on new cars, but it's not really discussed when it comes Correct. to used. Yeah. Again, this this different planet that used cars sit on for some reason, you know. But again, that new car has a five-year warranty at per- time of purchase. There's still remaining warranty on that car if it's two or three years old. Plus, yeah. what we're prepared to do is we also put a 12-month warranty on post that. You know, so you've got the warranty. And that, these things are important to know. You know, roadside assistance, you know, it's another thing on a new car. But is it on the used car? We make sure that all our used cars have roadside assistance. Okay. Uh, these are little things behind the scenes that you don't think of, you know, and you think, hang on, well, I get all these nice, shiny things on new cars. But we offer, we do the same shiny things on used cars, but people don't know. No. And it's not talked about. And on those platforms where you can buy through Facebook, Gumtree, um, car sales, you don't have those fluffy things. You know, and if you're buying it from someone on the right, down the road that you found one that they've decided to sell it privately, um, can you check your service history? Have you checked that the recalls are done? Have you checked that all these things are there and are you getting that fluffy service that, that you should be getting? Probably mm. not. In fact, definitely not. Probably not. You know, so, um, yeah, I couldn't suggest more that, you know, when you're, you're looking at that used car, you give it the same respect as if you were a new car, despite the price. What would be your top tips for, or I guess your top three questions you would recommend people ask a their car, new car expert or the used car, used car expert yep. when they do look at buying a used car? Um, first thing would be service history. Yep. Um, you know, um, do they know the history of the car? You know, what sort of driver it's been? Um the second thing would be around the kilometres. What was it used for? Um, and general gauge, the, the normal thing might be between 15,000 or 20,000 kilometres per year for a, for a normal driver. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one might have 30,000 k's or it might have 5,000 k's. What style of driving has it done? Um, the next thing I'd, I'd be um, asking for would be a test drive because I want to make sure that I'm driving the right car. Yeah. I want to make sure that, um, you know, in my mind, I've decided I want to buy that car, but does it feel like it's the right car? And, uh, and thirdly, probably, it, it wouldn't be so much a question. It would be around the relationship I have with that person. Yeah. You know what I mean? A- am I doing that? Do I feel comfortable here? Am I getting the right information? Do I feel comfortable to spend an hour, an hour and a half asking these person about all the features of the car? Yeah. How does this work? How does that work? Um, what's the Bluetooth connectivity like? What, what's the audio system like? You know, these are a lot of the things that you probably wouldn't ask if you didn't feel you had a good relationship or yeah. felt a bit awkward. But if you're with the right person, you spend the right time, which you, you deserve because it's your time and yeah. you're, you're spending the money, ask all those little things about the car. You know, the reverse camera. Can I try that out? Can I check this? How does the radar cruise control work? You know, um, rather than just assuming oh, I'm going to get a book and read it. You deserve more than that, you know. so it's the experience. Correct. Yeah. Correct. My last question, and it's, I guess, on the other side of the table, it's people, not so much people who are buying a car but wanting to trade their car in. Yep. Quite a common question we had was that people were worried that they can't trade their car because it's not good enough. So common. Yeah. So common. And it's the old thing, you know, um, and like I've heard this over the years, oh, no, I know, I wouldn't be game to bring that in. I can't bring that in. You'll be well, horrified. Well, that's not worth You'll anything. You'll be mortified. Yeah, it won't be worth yeah. anything. Oh, no, I'll run it into the ground. I don't actually know what that means, by the way, run it into the ground. I've never actually worked that out. But um, it, it's 
your car's worth a value. You know what I mean? If it's worth $100, a dollar, it's worth the rego that it's got left. Um, it's worth something. Um, and it shouldn't be your problem. You know, so we'll trade anything. We'll trade anything. In fact, I just want to trade cars. We'll trade jet skis. We'll trade motorbikes. I'll trade outboards. I'll trade, trade little dinghies. Uh, we'll trade anything that comes in here um, because we have the we have the outlet to be able to, to on sell. Yeah, we've got a great wholesale distribution center that we use um, to, to to offload some of our cheaper cars or cars that may not suit. Um, because again, we specialise in a lot, but there's other yards too that will specialise that will want that high kilometre or might want that more prestige or want yeah. that car with a, the, the cheaper sort of budget cars where they sell up to five thousand dollars. So yeah, don't feel as if you know you, you think your car's worth a grand or fifteen hundred bucks and. You know, I'm embarrassed to bring it in. Um, you're no different to anyone else. You know, that they're, they're all worth something and, and we'd love to take them off your hands and it all helps and the money helps, you know. And for you trying to, to sell that privately and you might get 500, you know, it might be worth 1,500 to us as a dealer, you know. So, and sometimes the open thing is that, no, no, I wouldn't be game to trade my car. It's worth nothing, it's worth nothing. And these worth nothing comments that I see and I look at the trading, they're worth two and three grand. You know, they're, they're, they're cars and they've served a really good purpose, you know. Mm. So, um, yeah, sometimes it's, again, it's the stigma. My car's not worth nothing because it's 15 years old. No, definitely not. Definitely not. So a really good episode there. And I, I could talk for, for literally hours around that. There's so many things over the years that I've experienced. And, you know, and they're all coming flooding back to me now around, you know, trading questions and what's my car worth and so on. But um, such an interesting one. I'm looking forward to, to, to some more of this used car series. But if you want to know more about that and keep up to date with, with what uh, we're doing in the used car centre and trade-ins and, and just that general advice, I'm happy to give it. And to find out more, head to the links in the description below.